Hello and welcome again to Philip Scott. We are going this week to look at some of the heathers, the ericas that are flowering during the winter time. So erica is the most diverse genus within the Cape Flora. It has over 800 species. So that means that basically one in ten species of uh, you find in the Fainbos is a species of erica. So although the winter months are not the best time for finding ericas, there are always some around and we're going to look at some of those species today. If any species of erica represents winter to me, it must be this, Erica imbricata. It is a common species found in uh, many parts of the Fainbos of the Klein River Mountains and it flowers pretty much from now, early June, through the winter and often caught, forms quite significant patches. So you see these white drifts of Erica imbricata. As you can see, the flowers are quite distinctive. They have these white tubes and out the end stick these black stamens. And so it gets the common name of salt and pepper heath, obviously for its white and black flowers. The Latin name Erica imbricata, imbricata refers to the fact that the bracts overlap the sepals and it's one of those species where the sepals and petals are similar in colour. So you can see that the sepals at the base of the flower and they overlap the bracts and they're both white. So that helps identify the species. There are other species that look similar to this but this is really the commonest one that you find with these black and white flowers with overlapping sepals and bracts and petals. At almost any time of year when you're in the Fainbos, you can find small pink heathers. However, don't be fooled into thinking that all pink heathers are the same species because usually at different times of the year you'll have different species with these small pink flowers appearing. This one is Erica Globiceps. It is a common species on the Klein River Mountains and uh, across to the Cockleberg and down to the south. However, it comes in a number of different subspecies and each subspecies occurs in a slightly different part of its range. Here on the Klein River Mountains we mainly get Erica Globiceps subspecies consors. And the difference between all the various species of these small pink heathers is usually found within the flowers and actually within the ovary and the stamens, characters and the sepals around it. So you have to really get these plants under a microscope to see what's going on. This particular species has four stamens which uh, a lot of the small ericas do and it's got quite ridged calyx at the base of the flower as well. But the difference between this and the other subspecies of Erica globiceps is actually in the number of ovules in each ovary. So the other subspecies just have a single ovule in each ovary whereas subspecies consors has two ovules in each ovary and you can only see that under a microscope. However, fortunately the different subspecies generally occur in different parts of their range and so that makes this one easier to identify. Here we have Erica coccinea, a widespread and common species of Erica within the Cape, but because of its a uh, wide range. It is, has this rather unusual name in that coccinea actually means red and as you can see the flowers of this particular plant are anything but red, more of a greenish yellow. 
but the species has different forms throughout its range from uh, yellow through to an almost greenish colour, orange and of course the red colour. All of them though have these very prominent stamens that stick out the end of the tube and the tube is this lovely curved shape as well so it's very much designed for sunbird pollination. It can therefore look similar to several other species which also have these long tubes and stamens sticking out the end. In particular one which is often confused with is Erica pluconetti. But the really key character for Erica coccinea are those leaf clusters and if you look at those leaf clusters you can see that they're in this sort of star shaped pattern up the stem so they form these short shoots densely clustered up the stem and form these star shapes uh, along there. Whereas for a species like Erica pluconetti the leaves come off singly up the stem and are overlapping upwards leaf pointing so that the plant on the leaf front looks quite different even though the flowers look similar. The other character to look at for Erica coccinea is those bracts at the base of a flower and with Erica pluconetti the bracts are tiny and on the pedicel and some distance from a calyx but in Erica coccinea they're right up close to the calyx and quite large and overlapping it. So again that's another good character to look at to check whether you've got Erica coccinea or Erica pluconetti. This is Erica pluconetti, a species that's very often confused with Erica coccinea. It also has these tubular flowers with the stamens sticking out the end. And like Erica coccinea it comes in a range of forms and so although most of our Erica coccinea here are yellow it doesn't help distinguish from this red Erica pluconetti because we also get Erica pluconetti here in white and it can be in a variety of forms through to this red colour. So the key characters for distinguishing Erica pluconetti are the leaves which as you can see here form singly up the stem overlapping pointing upwards overlapping whereas in Erica coccinea they form those little star-like clusters and the other key character is to look at the flower base itself and what the bracts are doing and on Erica pluconetti they form little bracts on the pedicel itself and the calyx is quite distant from the bracts whereas in Erica coccinea the bracts are quite large and they overlap the calyx. We get two subspecies of Erica pluconetti at Philipscop. The other subspecies, Erica pluconetti subspecies penicillata, is found on shale soils but this subspecies, subspecies pluconetti itself is found here in these rocky outcrops in a little bit of soil surrounded by these large chunks of sandstone. The difference between the subspecies of Erica pluconetti found here is mainly in the calyx and so you have to look at how the form is of the calyx whether it has a deep groove in it which is subspecies penicillata or the calyx lobes are really quite plain and ordinary in which case it's subspecies pluconetti. Here we have another species of Erica which is exceptionally similar to Erica coccinea, in fact more so than Erica pluconetti. It has very similar colours to the species of form of Erica coccinea that we get here, this yellow, greenish yellow colour to a flower. It even has the overlapping bracts at the base of the flower so that it's hard to distinguish the calyx and the bracts from each other. And even the leaves up the stem form little tufts, although in this case they, they
they sort of tend more towards Erica Plucanetti in that the tufts are pointing upwards and don't form that star shape as with Erica coccinea. The key difference there in this species is Erica melastoma and melastoma means black mouth. So when you look at these flowers and you see that yellow tube and you see the brownish stamen sticking out the end, actually just at the end of a flower tube you'll see that it's an even darker black. That is actually part of the flower tube and not the stamens. So melastoma means black mouth and that's because these yellow flowers actually have a very dark blackish mouth to them. Erica melastoma flowers at this time of year and it is particularly found on shale bands. So we find it here in this slightly richer soil than you would find Erica coccinea. There are over 40 species of Erica found at Philipscop and, and some 60 plus on the whole of the Clayton River mountains. So we've just been able to show you a very small sample of the Ericas that you find and some of them were very different and some as you saw are really quite similar and you have to look a bit closer to understand the differences. But we hope you enjoyed looking at some of the variation that you find and hopefully we can show you, show you some more different Ericas on future videos. But thanks again for watching.